Hello crafty friends, in today's video I'm going to make a mini envelope notebook. This envelope notebook is the brainchild of Louise Heinzel. I first saw it on her YouTube channel and really loved how she had done it and thought I wanted to create it too. I'm making mine in a mini version and not quite as complex as Louise's. I'm putting my own spin on it but um, do pop over, I will put the link to her video in the description below. These papers that I'm holding now are from Topology. I opened my haul box yesterday and I did a little um, video just to show you what's inside. I loved all these papers and want to try and incorporate them in my project today. I also have some homemade coffee stained paper and also some cardstock. You really can use anything you have. I'm starting with some plain cardstock. I'm using the other side of this one. It's called Mary Medley Collection from Kaiser Craft. I'm not sure if this is still available. These ones that I have bought were from Discontinued Ranges. So to start, we need to cover the front and back of each envelope, including the flaps. I'm using this plain vintage style paper for some of the sides and then I also have some that's got like a printed script on just anything plain um, you can use any kind of decorated paper that you like depending on the theme that you want to make your notebook from when you're trimming your paper do cut it slightly smaller than the front and back of the envelope about two millimeters all the way around this just makes it easier to stick down and then the edges won't flap up I'm just making pencil markings and then cutting with my cutter. Although the envelope has a V-shape, we're not going to follow that V-shape. We're going to put a full rectangle on the open side of the envelope because this is going to be a pocket when we're finished. As I've said before in my previous videos, when I create my projects, I don't always try something first and then make a second one to make a video. I video as I make. So this is the first time I'm making this and there are some you could call errors or things that maybe I did that weren't necessary, which I will tell you about to save yourself time. So do learn from my mistakes, but I don't see the point in creating something only to create it again for a video. Learn with me. Um, I don't mind to show mistakes I've made, how I correct them. Some of those need to start again. And I think that's all part of the learning process. So I'm sticking down my first rectangle with some glue stick and I've just popped that other piece of paper inside so I don't get glue all over the inside of the envelope. And re remember we're not following the V-shape, we're going to make this into a pocket. So I'm just going to paste down all the sides including the flap, I'm first going to stick the paper on and then just trim all the way around it. You can also use any size envelope. I've just done a mini one because I thought it'd be pretty cute. Louise, when she did hers, was a standard size envelope. So it's a much bigger notebook. It really is up to you and also depending on what envelopes you have. Now the parts that I said that are sometimes not necessary, I think one of them would be this side of the envelope. I've put uh, the text print paper on the one that isn't necessary because we're actually going to stick those two together on the edges to create a middle pocket. So that paper inside that you have won't be visible, so it doesn't really matter what you put. But um, I didn't realize this when I started creating it, so I did put some pretty paper there. Not the end of the world, but just noting for when you create yours. Again, when you're placing the paper for the flap, do leave a small space between the fold of the top of the envelope and where you put your cardstock. This just helps it bend easier and it doesn't flap up. The paper doesn't flap up. Now both our envelopes are covered with some kind of a paper front and back, including the inside of the flap. 
As an extra step, I'm going to run the triangle flap under my sewing machine with just some brown thread, just a running stitch. I've done it twice just to give it a little bit of texture and I like to leave the strings hanging just for some dimension. I'm going to distress the edges all the way around the envelope. I'm using my Distress Ink. It's a Tim Holtz brand and the color is Vintage Photo. This step is also optional, but if you want that nice vintage feel, this distress edging does look really nice. You're going to do both sides of the envelopes, including the triangle flaps and all the little edges. We're now going to prepare the little papers that are going to go in our notebook. I'm just using plain coffee stained paper that I've just made at home and I'm just cutting it to size. I'm just using a ruler to tear it. I like the rough edges and I'm just roughly measuring how it's going to fit for my little envelope notebook. You can put as many or as few pages as you like depending how thick you want your notebook. I'm just putting very few pages. I'm keeping mine pretty simple. I do like the torn edge of the spiral page. I normally like to keep those in my journals just for extra texture. And I've put it into this, but afterwards I actually do remove it because it doesn't fit well on this kind of project because the flaps on the envelope sort of make it not to work too great. So I do take that out. And then I'm also adding some pages from a novel, from an old book which I also take out and in the end just really leave the coffee stained paper. It's all a bit of trial and error. We now need to join the two envelopes together with a sort of spine. I'm going to use a piece of fabric for this. So I've lined up my two envelopes next to each other with about a two to three millimeter gap in between them. And it's going to be the front side of the envelope. So the part where you'd normally write the address, that is the side that you are going to have facing up at this point. And then I'm just going to put a piece of paper first with the glue just to hold it in place and then I'm going to add my fabric on top leaving that small gap and this is going to be the spine of my book. We are eventually going to stick these two sides of the envelope together using ad adhesive on the bottom and each side and leaving the top open as a pocket and now the reason we're actually doing this step to create a spine this is where we're going to do the stitching for our pages so it is necessary to hold everything together. Another oopsie I made, which I didn't show as part of the video because it'll make everything too long, I added some fabric and lace on the other side of the spine. And this part actually needs to go on top of the paper. So I'm just removing this because it's not necessary and it's making everything a bit too chunky. It's leaving behind a little bit of the paper, which I don't mind because it actually gives it quite a nice vintage and old feel. So I've removed that and now I'm going to restitch my pages back into my book. And I'm going to add this little number card stock as part of the spine, which will also protect the paper from tearing when I do the stitching. So before I stitched, I did measure on the inside of the envelope spine. I made three holes, I punched three holes. I just measured them evenly and I did the same measurements for my little papers. And now I'm going to stitch it in using a pamphlet stitch. I'm using an embroidery thread and then I'm just feeding it through the middle and then up and through the one side, back across inside and then up on the other side and back through the middle and then you tie it into a knot. Now we're stitching these papers on the outside of what seems to be the notebook. You could also stitch them on the inside but the way Louise did it which I like, she did it from the outside so that this inside part is going to be a pocket. We need to add some eyelets on our envelope flap so that we can put some kind of a tie to keep the little notebook closed. 
I'm going to use some metal eyelets and then just before I add those I want to put a little circle of design paper just to sort of make a little bit more of a focal point. I don't have a round punch that size so I'm just sort of cutting it out by hand using a little cap from one of my inks as a stencil. We'll just stick that down with some glue stick just to keep it in place and then we'll add the metal brads. And while editing the video I did realize that for some reason I didn't film the part where I put the eyelets in with my crocodile. I do apologize for that. There are other videos available though on YouTube to show you how to install those. I'm using a piece of fabric. It's the same fabric that I used on the inside of my journal for the spine. It's just like a cotton which is really nice and thin. I've just um, torn two thin strips and I've fed those through the little eyelets to create the ties. And now I'm going to stick the two envelopes together to create the pocket. We're applying glue just on the right hand side, the left hand side at the bottom. We're leaving the top open where we can slip in little tags and other little ephemera. To assist in the drying and to secure it well, I'm adding some bulldog clips and I'm going to leave that to dry for a little while. And while I have the bulldog clips there, I can actually work on the pages and I want to rough them up a little bit the way Louise did. I really love the way she did this. It's really a unique way of making them look very worn and vintage. So just bend them up, tear them a little bit and then apply some Distress ink straight from the pad just to give it that really worn look. I would really love if you subscribed to my channel. I have so many videos coming your way. I do tutorials, I make ephemera, we do junk journals, a lot of art journaling too. And this is the home of the full deck challenge. We're on to the second one now. So do subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. I'm going to add a small piece of fabric at the bottom of the notebook on the actual envelopes this is where the ties are going to keep tying and to prevent it from sort of getting torn and worn away we're just going to add a bit of a of protection in the form of some fabric or lace or some maybe thicker cardstock whatever you have handy And then once your little notebook is ready, it's ready to decorate if you want. I'm going to use a whole bunch of stickers that I actually bought off AliExpress quite a while ago. I managed to find them when I moved into my new craft room and I thought I'll have to use some of these. So mine will be all just stickers. You can use any kind of ephemera or any kind of decoration that you want. You could even paint it by hand or leave it as is. So I'm not doing very much at the moment except for just moving around the stickers and finding a good composition for them and seeing where I want to place everything and then I'm going to stick them down. They are a transparent sticker so they are a little bit shiny on the video so I hope you can actually see um, how they look. It's not um, ideal to have transparent shiny stickers when you're trying to do a tutorial but um, I think you'll get the idea. So to be able to have the design continuous, I am going to cut the stickers along the line of where the envelope flap is going to be and stick some down against the paper and some on the actual flap. 
This step would be optional. You could decorate the flap separately and then the underneath separately. It doesn't have to all continue. It all depends what look you like. Once our little notebook is all decorated, I'm going to pop in some tags into the middle section, which is now a little pocket. These tags are from Topology. I will put a link to their website below. There's also a discount if you use my link. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and were inspired to create your own envelope notebook. I think these are great to send as happy mail to people or even to pop them into your journal as an extra place for journaling. And I nearly forgot we have little pockets on the inside too, so let's add some tags in there too. Lots of little surprises in this notebook. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.